Hello and welcome to another edition of The Pastor's Heart. We are going to have just a great week together. Our guest is Pastor Troy Wynn uh, from Freedom Church in Warner Robins, Georgia. Cannot wait to get in. We're going to be talking about uh, the church and the purpose of the church. Uh, so we can't wait to get into that. Uh, so it's very exciting. Uh, we've been talking a little bit about uh, what's going on. We've had a great day so far. We started off the day with praise and worship, and now we're ready to just uh, bring the word. Uh, but before we begin, I always like to talk about our prayer and praise report line. Uh, that is so very important. Uh, it's something that we do here as a, as a ministry to the people of the body of Christ in Middle Georgia. Uh, that number is 478-474-3986. And you can also email prayer at wgnm.com. We're so glad that we have the opportunity to do this. And, and we've been doing prayer requests, and people call in their prayer requests, and we pray over them weekly. Um, but I also want to mention, too, that we, are, we need praise reports to come back in. It doesn't have to be something that we helped uh, pray uh, for with you. It can just be something giving testimony to God, what God has done in your life, uh, in the lives of the ones you love, uh, it's just so exciting. You know, in Revelation, we hear that the accuser of the brethren is defeated by the blood of the Lamb. That's something we couldn't do, but we can do. The other part that helps defeat the accuser of the brethren is the word of our testimony. Uh, and so to defeat that accuser, we need to make sure we're giving the word of our testimony. So uh, call that number, give a prayer request, praise report, uh, and we'll... Uh, uh, pray over those during our weekly staff times of prayer. We also uh, have been doing it on Periscope. Uh, if you uh, find Periscope on your app store uh, and, and follow WGNM TV, uh, we do that every Monday. Uh, and so just get ready for that too because Periscope has been a, a godsend to the body of Christ. Allows us to do some behind the scenes ministry and uh, uh, it's just really, really good. Of course, all of our social media there, we're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and now, of course, Periscope and YouTube, too, uh, just as, a, an, as an aside. Uh, so you can find a lot of that at our website, WGNM.com. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, follow us in all the social media. We, we send out a bunch of stuff on social media. We love it. We think it's a great tool to use uh, for advancing the kingdom. Uh, so anyway... Uh, what we're going to get into today uh, with Pastor Troy is uh, the purpose of the church. But first, I want to say welcome to you today. Thank you. Glad to be here. And uh, we're so excited about uh, uh, what you've got. But let's first talk just about uh, Freedom Church for a second, okay. if we can. Sure. Um, give us a brief history about how, how uh, Freedom Church came out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was thinking about that this morning. About 10 years ago, God gave me... Uh, this vision of a church that was slightly different than what I was accustomed to growing up in the South. Uh, I was an assistant pastor at the time uh, at my father's church, and it took about three years for, the, for that vision to kind of really flush out. And after about three years, we launched out and started Freedom Church. Uh, and our real purpose is uh, to bring people to Christ in a way that may be untraditional, uh, to really be a catalyst that connects people with Jesus. So we kind of are the radical uh, church in terms of kind of going against the grain intentionally uh, if it means we can reach the loss uh, more creatively and more effectively. We're not afraid to be different. Amen. Uh, we're not afraid to, to do what we need to do to bring people into the church so they can hear about Jesus. And the partnership that we've had with the station and the church is... is mm. Uh, you know, even when you were still at your dad's church, but yeah. then also 
uh, as you as you launched and once you got ready, you were ready to go and it and, oh, yeah. and you knocked it out of the park. Man. <laughs> so we've had a great relationship uh, with them with uh, Freedom Church. the The website that they have is thefreedomchurch.us. So if you for all the information that we're about to give you, if you miss it, you can go to their website. Um, but they're located at 2607 Moody Road there in Warner Robins. Uh, and later this week, we want to talk about how you got your building. Okay, uh, that's that's some good <laughs> stuff. Um, but uh, so contact them if you have a, they have an email address of contact at thefreedomchurch.us. Uh, service times are nine forty five on Sunday morning mm -hmm. and eleven thirty a.m. And yeah. then there's a Wednesday service time at seven thirty. Right. And um, plus, you just want to um, what's your find you on Twitter or I mean on uh, Facebook is uh, 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 just Troy Freedom Wynn. Church or Fre Troy Wynn. Troy Wynn. Mm -hmm. And um, because uh, he's very good about putting stuff out on social media, oh, so yeah. you want to uh, <laughs> find him and connect with him. And uh, uh, he, he just, uh, I tell you, there's there's few people that come into the station that uh, there's a kindred spirit with, uh, like what we have here with with yeah. Pastor Troy. Uh, always love it when we get a chance just to even briefly. Oh yeah, uh, talk. <laughs> and usually our brief talks <laughs> turn to not be so brief. So. Um, but anyway, those are kind of the, the we just kind of want to let everybody know about how to get in touch with the church. Their phone number is 478-235-9917. Uh, so there's, you know, if you're looking for a church home and, and, and maybe you're tired of church being done the same way over and over again, um, th th it's a fresh approach. I'm even going to call it different. It's fresh. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's a fresh approach. Uh, it's not the same stale stuff that you might see elsewhere. Not at all. But um, uh, you know, it's 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 a good it's a good fresh. It's it's something that's it's a fresh air, fresh wind uh, that the body of Christ needs, and it's something that uh, uh, if you're looking for a church home right now. Uh, I'd say at least give them a shot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. I, I'd encourage you to. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, we're gonna. Um, why don't we, before we get into the word, okay. uh, why don't you just open us up in a quick word of prayer? Absolutely. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we want to say thank you just for this opportunity to come together and share uh, on this subject matter. Our prayer is that you will allow this conversation uh, to be a catalyst that opens the eyes of both the church and even those that may be watching that, that don't know you, that something we say might yes. intrigue them to want to get to know Jesus, the Jesus that loves the Jesus that helps us uh, with our relationships in life. I ask that you would bless us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, go ahead and take us into what we got today. Well, I'm, in, I'm super excited about this particular subject. You know, you were at, asking me what was I interested in talking about. And right off the rip, no pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> the subject came up, what is the purpose of the church? Uh, and I wanted to start by defining what purpose is. Miriam Webster says that purpose is something set up as an object or an end to be attained. And then it, it gives us this word intention. So we could say, what is the intention of the church? And I really like that uh, because even though we have different churches all over the world, I believe that the intention is the same because God gives us the intention. Uh, the method may be different, but mm -hmm. the end result, right. what is the end result? And I'm excited because I think in many facets, I think many churches have gotten away from the purpose, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Because if we're not operating in our purpose, uh, then I'm curious as to what are we really doing when we meet on Sundays and right. Wednesdays and even when we leave that fellowship. What right. are we really doing? That, exactly. that's, that's my heart's desire. You know, with, I've, the, to mirror that image mm -hmm. uh, about getting away you know, we've been doing this program for, oh man, eight years, <laughs> almost eight years now, I guess. Wow. Okay. Um, and it, the Lord has kept it very focused mm -hmm. as the pastor's heart. Right. I do very little, um, I don't bring in every parachurch ministry. Mm -hmm. I do have, there are a couple that we would bring in uh, that we partner with. Okay. Um, but you know, I get I get calls all the time for musicians, book authors, <laughs> uh, you know, all sorts of things that are good things. Right. But it's that purpose of the program right. is to highlight the local pastor. Right. And um, if I if I started getting off from that, mm. well, then you know, now we've lost our purpose. Absolutely. And that's kind of what you're talking about, where the church has a purpose, and that's what we're going to be talking about this week. Yeah, so that's we exactly to discover it. the purpose of the church. Yeah, I think it's important. If we keep inviting people to come to church, 
uh, doesn't it make sense for us to know what our purpose is? You know, we say come to church and people are searching. People are searching for purpose. Mm -hmm. People are searching for the meaning of life. Uh, and in, in a nutshell, for me, the purpose of the church is relational, bottom line. Now, that relational uh, purpose, I think, has three kind of offshoots. One, relational in terms of how we relate to God. Right. Number two, how we relate to fellow believers. But here's the one I'm excited about most, how we relate to unbelievers. Because everything we do is relational. We have to relate to people. When we worship, that's relating to God. When we, re when we preach, we're relating to people. But the purpose that, that really tugs at my heart is, are we effectively relating to the non-believer in terms of, you know, what God means and what Jesus died for and what we want to happen when you come to our church? Mm -hmm. um, so that relational part, I think, is the, is the most important part because everything's about relationship. You and I have a relationship. Right. Uh, and because we have a relationship, uh, we don't have to force it. It flows. It works. Uh, because you and I kind of have a purpose that's centered around Christ. Christ is the foundation. Right. You know. Well, and it's it, w when we do it relationally, mm -hmm. there's um, there's disagreements. Oh, absolutely. But there's also, you know, we still enjoy that 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 fellowship, that absolutely. that relationship. Absolutely. Uh, my wife and I don't agree on that's everything. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I was thinking the same thing. And, and so I mean, you know, it's. It's uh, you know I love my parents, but my parents and I don't agree on everything. Absolutely. But it, it but it's about that. But we still but I still show up for their house when it's time to eat. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You show up to Mama's house when it's time to eat because that's what you're supposed to do. Right, because there's a relationship. Exactly. And I think the more we learn how to relate to the world, and that's really my heart's desire because the world is changing. And a lot of us struggle relating to the world. We can relate to each other because we can talk about Jesus. We can talk about scriptures. Yeah. We can talk about how good God is. God is good all the time. We got all these cliches. But I'm, I'm discovering that a lot of ministries and people in church, we struggle communicating with those that are unchurched because we feel like they are so unlike us that it's kind of difficult to have that conversation that leads to the conversation about Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus was a master communicator. He could talk to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the unbeliever. He could talk to anybody. And as followers of Christ, we should have that same type of ability, but the ability gets lost when we don't have the desire. You have to have a desire of burning in your heart to relate to the unbeliever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love preaching to the saints uh, because they need preaching to too. But the beautiful part about being a pastor is I get excited when I get a chance to talk to people who don't like Jesus or people who don't like church. I get excited because right. that's an opportunity to kind of infiltrate someone that's exactly. on the devil's team and turn them, you know, into a believer. That excites me as opposed to having the Sunday pep rallies oftentimes uh, right. that we have on a regular basis. And one of my problems with, with purpose in church is it, Sometimes we get caught up in celebrating our own salvation. That's just been, I've been, I'm church board. So, you know, we come to church and we will celebrate. We live saved another week. We shout because we didn't sin last week. We shout because, you know, we didn't do something. We celebrate our own salvation. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a place for that. But what about the people who are lost on their way to hell? And we went an entire week ripped and we didn't tell anybody about Christ. Mm -hmm. But we come to church to celebrate Christ with those who already know Christ purpose. That cannot be the purpose of God to save us and then we not have an impact on those that still need saving. Right. There has to be a broader purpose that extends beyond you and I celebrating the fact that we are on our way, you know, to be redeemed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's keep on going. Let's take, take us into our scriptures. Let's go. All right. Well, the first scripture I've got is Luke 4, 16 and 17. Luke 4, 16 and 17. And I titled this Purpose isn't always popular after I read this scripture. And it's a familiar one. It says that so he came to Nazareth uh, where he had been brought up. And we're talking about Jesus. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on this Sabbath day and he stood up to read. Verse 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, this is where it gets good. This is Jesus. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is the purpose of the church. 
This is Jesus telling us what our purpose is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. 19 says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To me, that's like the purpose of the church in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. But if you look at that, a lot of that involves dealing with people who are messed up. He says, I'm coming to preach the gospel to the poor. Wow. Heal, brokenhearted. Liberate the captives. Sight to the blind. So God says the purpose of the church, number one, we have to remember that our purpose has something to do with those who are messed up, those that are in need of the message that we have. Mm -hmm. So if we're operating in purpose, then we have to do what Jesus said. But what I like about this, you, you read the latter part of this story in verse 29, they got angry with Jesus when he told them what his purpose was. So much so that the Bible says they drove him to a cliff that they might throw him off the cliff. <laughs> Now that, that, that that's kind a bad of, day. That's a, that's a bad day, and it's not, it's not like he went in the church and started cussing. It's not like he went in the church and lit a cigarette. He went inside the church. He says, let me clarify your purpose. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and you know this, they had an agenda. Mm -hmm. An agenda is different from a purpose. Right. <laughs> think about it. An agenda yeah. can be what we put together, what we think we should be doing. And sometimes, you know, agendas can be great, but an agenda is not a purpose unless the agenda comes from the Word of God. Right. Absolutely. So purpose can get you in trouble. And some of the things that we're going to say are going to get us in trouble today. <laughs> I can promise you that. I promise you that because I, I'm, I'm a challenger. Absolutely. I'm a challenger of the church. I challenge myself in my ministry. And when Jesus said what he said, and I, I go back and I look at it, what he said should have excited the church. But right. you, know, you know why it didn't excite them? That says work. Mm-hmm. What Jesus said is, I've got a work for you to do that you're going to have to do when you leave the synagogue. They got accustomed to coming to church, having a great time, celebrating salvation, and going home. Walking past the poor, walking past the blind, walking past the oppressed. And the attitude was almost like, well, if you weren't in church, hey, you missed it. But church is what happens in the walls. Ministry is what happens when we leave the walls. Absolutely. I read a book years ago um, as part of a discipleship group that I was in. Mm -hmm. It was called Out of the Salt Shaker and Into the World. Wow. And uh, like you know, it, the, the, the whole purpose was about lifestyle evangelism. Oh, okay. You know, just just being available, Here, hearing Holy Spirit speak mm -hmm. and, and, you know, pay for that meal that, ah. uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, just, you know, anything to do that you need to do to start up a conversation or point someone to Christ. Right, right. Um, as you're as you're ministering to people. You know, I, I, I get approached quite a bit being on television and <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I try to always listen to Holy Spirit yes. and say, you know, is this an opportunity? Is right. this somebody uh, that uh, uh, needs to hear are they just saying hey right. <laughs> or do they need some, you know, is there something that they need? Right. And um, there's something it it's, it makes, you know, we're, I'm on TV and, mm -hmm. and, you know, all the kind of good stuff, but it, it, you know, it makes it personal. Yeah. Just the same way as, you know, I'll put it this way. When I'm on TV, I'm two-dimensional. Yeah. Well, when I'm out at Walmart or Waffle House right. or, right. or anything, I, I'm three-dimensional. I'm out, and, and now there's a whole new dimension to my ministry. Absolutely. And so the same way w people see us at church... Mm. That's good. It's two dimensional, but when we get outside, it's time to let's pop open the other dimension of our ministry. Yeah, that's good, and I think we have to be we have to be mindful of that, though. Uh, we have to be reminded, and that's what I think this this particular pastor's heart is about. I think it's about reminding the body of Christ. You know, we do well in our own confound, but you know, we struggle when it comes to even relating to other churches. Here we are talking about relating to the poor and the brokenhearted and those that don't know Christ. But let's talk about the fact that we still have segregation issues in the church. Mm -hmm. We struggle relating if a person is Baptist and a per person is Methodist or a person is Pentecostal or non-denominational. And it's almost like if you don't believe exactly like I believe, if you don't jump when I jump and shout when I shout, uh, then we can't relate. And I think that's kind of kind of strange. Yeah. Because we are supposed to be agents of relationships. 
Right. But if we can't relate to each other, then I kind of understand why we struggle relating to the unbeliever because we struggle relating to the believer. Right. I like to see, you know, I wish we could see, too often we see denominations being used as um, dividing walls. Yes, yes. But, you know, at the same time, I think that if, it, if we look at it differently of, because part of the problem is, is that we see what we're doing over here, mm -hmm. and they're not doing it the exact same yes, way. Yes, yes. So, but if we looked at it like, you know, we have, uh, was it four branches of the military? Okay. And, you know, the Air Force doesn't try to do the Marines' job. Not at all. The, the, the Navy doesn't try to do the Army's job. Not at all. And if we look at those divisions, because they have divisions. Oh, sure. But if they look at their purpose... They <laughs> and they see, okay, you know what? Uh, we're this denomination. You know, we really feel like our purpose is is uh, uh, f taking care of the poor mm -hmm. or or doing social justice issues. Right, right. Uh, you know, that's our that's our big deal. So, mm -hmm. okay, run with that, but right. don't criticize them for doing that. No. Don't we? You know, we're well. You know, our issue over here is getting people saved and 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 uh, doing. Uh, you know kids programs and whatnot. Absolutely. Great. That's good. But don't, you know, just because they're not doing it exactly the way you do it, right. don't don't knock them. I mean, right. there's no reason to. None at all. Because we're all on the same team. Right. Yeah, I think of it in two terms. I think of an umbrella and I think of the body. You know, the, the scripture talks about the different parts of the body and how the parts have to work together and the toe doesn't say, you know, right. to the exactly. finger, I don't need you. And I think of an umbrella, umbrella the same way you have that covering on the umbrella then you have those, and, and excuse me because I don't know the proper name, but you have those, those metal prongs that come mm -hmm. out that kind of stabilize the umbrella. Well, all of those prongs are divided. They're separate, but they're connected. But when they work together, the purpose exactly. of the umbrella is fulfilled. Now, when you have prongs that break, you've had an umbrella and you had a couple of prongs that broke. Yes. <laughs> that umbrella <laughs> doesn't function. Still looks like an umbrella. Catch this now. But it doesn't function Fully like an umbrella. Wow. Got a lot of churches look like churches. <laughs> <laughs> Congregation, steeple on top, taking up an offering. Right. But when we are not working together, and I like, I like the analogy of the military because the purpose of the military is to serve and to protect our country. Mm -hmm. That unified purpose allows the different divisions to do different things because the Air Force, they've got the air. The Marines, they're, they're the bad boys. You know, they, they, <laughs> they're just the bad boys. My daughter's in the Army. Right. It's a different type of division. Uh, but they all work together. So we don't have to be alike, even though we may have the same umbrella of purpose. Mm -hmm. We need to be different because I believe, Rip, there's a church for everybody. I don't, I don't think that every church should be alike because there's a kind of church for people uh, kind of like me who grew up in tradition, grew up in the traditional format. And by the time I was 19, I said I would never go to church again. I was done mm -hmm. uh, just because... Religion uh, and traditionalism right. didn't didn't really speak to me. I'm kind of a I'm a believer, but I'm I'm such an anti something that I like to challenge the system of what you have to do, how you have to dress when you go to church. Right. Uh, I challenge that concept. I grew up in an organization that said if you came to church without a tie, you were sinning. No, this is a God heaven truth. I remember an assistant pastor was preaching one time and our superintendent came in and in the middle of his sermon, the superintendent pulled his coattail and, and I won't call the organization, but when that happens, that's your sign that you need to sit down. Well, he was in the middle of his message. Superintendent got up and said, I'm sorry to have to pull his coattail, sorry to have to pull him down, but he does not have a tie on. <laughs> this is the God heaven truth. I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. Now imagine me as a 15 year old young man looking up, hearing the word of God, having that word interrupted because mm -hmm. a man did not have a tie on. That is not something that I wanted to be a part of because right. it didn't make sense to me. But the purpose, the purpose is that we allow God to use everybody the way that God has called us to be used. Exactly. You know, I like to wear ties sometimes. Sometimes I, you know, Wear an open shirt. I was I glad. I was glad you didn't have a tie today. I really was because I was nervous about this. I said I don't. I don't know if. I've gotten to the point now where all my ties are in a wad in the corner of my uh, of my closet. I just. I, I looked at it. You know, when 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 a man's having a heart attack, the first thing you do is unloosen his tie. I figure there's something wrong with ties. I'm, no, no, not really. If you, if you like wearing ties, knock yourself out. You gotta get some letters. Uh, on that I know. <laughs> I just. You know. Uh, uh, we do. I, I feel. 
of course, for this program, we're just casual as, sure. as, as, as we want to be. Sure. But uh, um, the, the, it's just those rules. I mean, I, we've all been in those, those churches. Uh, I was in a church uh, in another state, <laughs> it, 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 way away, um, where the youth were going to uh, take up the offer. It was Youth Sunday or okay. something. And so we were part of, we were doing the ushering and, and all sure. that kind of stuff. And they did ask beforehand mm -hmm. that everybody wear uh, a suit jacket. Okay. And well, I didn't, the only suit jacket I owned was made out of leather. Wow. And it was just, it was a nice jacket. It was a nice, was, I loved that jacket. It wasn't your Michael Jackson jacket. Was no, it wasn't my Michael Jackson jacket. It was, but it was cut like a suit jacket. Wow. So, but it was made out of leather. Well, I got sent home. Wow. Because it was made out of leather. You gotta uh, be kidding It was me. a jacket. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So, I mean, I just, you know, there were, and, and, and it, there were so many issues. They, that was probably the most legalistic church we were ever in. There were right. little. I mean, they had rules when they sat on the platform that the the men who sat on the platform could not cross their uh, legs, um, knee or uh, ankle to knee. Like that's to me, that's the most comfortable way. I so they I had they had to cross their 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 uh, their legs ankle to ankle if they wanted to cross their legs. Okay, that's a new and, one for me. And so <laughs> because somebody might see the sole of your shoe. Wow. And, you know, I know in some cultures that's uh, that's offensive. Okay. But we were not in that culture. Yeah, you were, we were not. I'm not even going <laughs> to. We were somewhere in the Midwest. That was not part of Midwestern culture. Um, so I just see that there's so many. Uh, we start adding on rules mm -hmm. uh, that just, and that's the, the Pharisees did the same thing. That's they started off thinking. with a certain number of rules, and they just started adding so much. Um I recently did a teaching on uh, getting out of dry, dead churches. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not real big on this program. I've been very cautious over the last eight years okay. to say to not do sheep stealing. Okay. But I believe that we are in a point in time here in middle Georgia where I would encourage you that if you feel, if something prompts your spirit right now, that you are in a dry, dead church. It is time to get out. Amen. That's good. I, you know, wow. I just have, there's, the time is too short. Yeah. You need to find a church that's flowing in revival. Yeah. You need to find a church that's active and, and alive and is ministering to people, ministering to you. Um, I just, I, and you know, I've been very cautious for, for, like I said, for eight years. Yeah. I don't, we don't do sheep stealing. Right. That's not what we do. However, I would definitely encourage you that if you, Pray and ask the Lord to prompt you. If you're in a dry, dead church, you know what? I don't care if Grandmama helped lay the foundation. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Get out. Yeah. It's, it's I, you know, I'm very cautious about that, but that is something I'm feeling very, very yeah. strong about. I endorse that. <laughs> That's all the time we've got for today. We got a whole nother, uh, we got four more programs to do. So wow. we will see you tomorrow on The Pastor's Heart.